Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. Jaguars GM Trent Balk gets harsh review from a former NFL player. Doesn't look like the Jacksonville Jaguars are closer to hiring a head coach than they were a week ago. And a big reason might be the presence of general manager Trent Balk. It's been reported throughout the process that several candidates for the position aren't interested in working with him, and it's hard to blame them. Balk's reputation around the NFL isn't great, and you will be hard-pressed to find any players or fellow executives who will vouch for him, which makes the Jaguars' decision to stick with him even more puzzling. So, he's difficult to work with, but that doesn't matter as long as he can hoard talent in Jacksonville, right? That's the thing. He's not that great at identifying good players. The Jags 2021 draft class is full of upside, but that looks like the execution and not the norm. He struggled to find playmakers in the draft in the last year of his tenure as a general manager of the 49ers, which ultimately end up being one of the many reasons he was let go. Balk could have a Pro Bowl player in front of him and he wouldn't be able to tell. At least that's how things played out when he released fullback Michael Robinson back when he was with the Niners. Back when he was with, um, but don't take our word for it. Robinson recently talked about the time Balk cut him. Here's what he had to say about the incident. I remember walking up to his office, Trent Balk looking, looking at my face and saying, you aren't good enough to play in the National Football League. You have a four-string running back and a, at best. You are a third string fullback. Maybe you should go into scouting. You want to have a job. I was 26, 27 years old, young man in the NFL, and I was pissed off. They don't get me, they don't get me wrong. It gave me an opportunity to go win a Super Bowl with the Seattle Seahawks, but I went to the Pro Bowl from a talent evaluator standpoint. And again, you can say what you want about my comments because he cut me. You say what you want about Trent Balk, but I just don't think he's a great talent evaluator. That's just my personal opinion. Um, as Robinson said, he went on to have a productive stint with the Seattle Seahawks and made the Pro Bowl in 2011. The former NFL fullback and host of Good Morning Football acknowledged that he's biased since he talked about his personal experience with Balk and not someone else's. However, it's not hard to imagine his exchange playing out the way he said it did. Again, it doesn't matter if Balk lacks good people skills, but it would help as long as he's good at his job. But the fact that he doesn't have a good track record hiring coaching, it's coaches and is more interested in winning power struggles than football games, it's hard to imagine the Jaguars turning the corner with him as the general manager. Byron Left was reportedly told the Jaguars it was either him or Balk, and the fact that the general manager hasn't been fired doesn't reflect well. If the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator is the organization's top candidate for the job, but they can't fulfill a pretty important request, what should others expect if they get the job? If Leftwich ultimately turns down the Jags job because of Balk, the team will have limited options to fill their vacancy. Los Angeles Rams offensive coordinator Kevin O'Connell is suddenly a candidate for the opening, but what if, he's in, he, what if he isn't interested in working with Balk either? What would a Jaguars brash do then? Well, what he did to Michael Robinson, there's been plenty of people to do that to other players, to other people in general, you know, but this is the thing. You know, if you feel like in your heart of hearts, you know, that this guy isn't the right guy, which from me listening, he isn't. Um, they had a chance. I think they could have traded up to get Najee Harris. They didn't do it. They basically just um, went after the um, running back from Clemson who always gets hurt. He got hurt last year. He was out for the season. And Najee Harris was ranked as the best rookie in the league outside of Jamar Chase and um, Kyle Pitts and Mac Jones. So... What is his problem? Does he feel is his way or the highway? Yeah. 
He has what we call the good old pink privilege. He know he pink. He know he can say what he want because he has an owner. Yeah, he's a millionaire. But does he know anything about football? Hell no. But it seems like Balk doesn't either, because that's why the Niners got rid of him. Byron Leftwich basically said, look. He basically said, look. I'm not playing with this guy. You know, it's either him or me. And that's what they're saying that Eric the enemy. Eric the enemy is having that problem. That's why nobody's um choosing him because he basically, you know, wants to have final say on, you know, who comes there. And he has a right. You know, he has a right to feel that way. My thing is this. If it was a coach that even the pink folk having problems with him. Now, if the pink folk, <laughs> if the pink folk as coaches, you know what I'm saying, don't like you, that means it's time to get your butt fired, man. <laughs> it's time for you to go. Because if pink folk don't like you, then man, you already know what the problem is. It's you. It's you, man. It is your fault. It's your fault. <laughs> you know, and, and this is what it is. Share Khan. Everybody like, no, nah, it's all I'm a mirror. Listen, Share Khan. <laughs> What he need to do is put his foot down. He need to put his foot down and let this guy and let this guy um get out of there. Or he ain't gonna have nobody coming. <laughs> like for real. Like ain't nobody gonna wanna come. Because if you're general manager, this was the problem in Miami. This was the problem in Miami. The brother man in Miami, he was terrible. He was real terrible. You know, and Brian Flores told him, look, man, I, I wanted um I wanted Justin um Justin Herbert. He wanted Justin Herbert, which is the truth. Justin Herbert is way better than Tua. <laughs> way better than Tua. It's not even close who's better. And see, that's the problem. But Brian Flores ended up getting the chop, getting the ax, because the owners... I guess because the owners, they they like um the owners like these guys better because I, I guess they can go out to the golf course with them. That's all that happened. You know, Sher Khan, he can go out there and everything and party, he could drink, he could, you know, shoot, he could kick the, he could kick the um, you know, he could kick the combo to him, you know, like yeah, man, remember that chick I met, that, all that crap, you know. The good old buddy system, right? The good old buddy system. And this is the problem that we have all the time. And this is why the NFL always finds itself 
like being scrutinized, but they don't care because they're like, listen, y'all bastards still gonna watch. And they're right. They could be as racist, they could be as prejudiced, or anything is possible. It don't matter. They know we gonna watch. But in this case, this has nothing to do with prejudice or none of that. This guy's just an idiot. <laughs> He's just an idiot. Listen, if pink folk don't like you, you doomed. Your job is doomed, bro. It's just the facts. You know, it's, it, it is what it is. You know, some people gonna disagree with me, you know, and that's fine. But it's the truth. He has not been great at evaluating talent. He's letting his ego basically run everything. He's basically saying, look, it's my way or the highway. And you know, Khan, he should have been the got rid of this dude. But I guess not. I, I guess he got some um pictures of him with a mistress or something. He got him, you know, pictures with a mistress. Or caught him doing something he ain't supposed to do. You know, we don't know these days. Khan just got caught with another man, allegedly. <laughs> you know, this is the new century, you know. You know, we don't know. So, to me, the Jaguars need to get a new GM in there. Or they're, they're probably going to get a coach, pink guy, who, you know, going to get a chance, you know, because he's the pink guy. So everybody going to give him a chance now. You know. You know, he's the new ambitious guy they're going to pick. But that's my thing. You're going to pick the offensive coordinator from the Rams? I hope not. Because their play call in this playoffs has been terrible. I mean, I'm just being honest, dog. They should have lost the last game. You know, that's facts. It was pretty bad, man. <laughs> it was pretty bad. And then McVay just almost effed it up entirely. But the Jaguars, the Jaguars owner going to wake up one of these days. He going to wake up and then it's going to be telling him, look, man, we got to get rid of this guy. We're not bringing in talent. Because when the talent don't come, you know what I'm saying, then that don't bring the butts in the seats. Trust me, when he starts seeing people in the seats not coming because the talent ain't up to par, oh, Khan going to make that switch. Trust me. Because he's a business guy. Right now, he don't care. Right now, he like, all right, we're going to be all right. Nah, 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 dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, this guy got some dirt on Khan. That's why he's still there. Because back in the day, if you were a general manager and nobody, you know what I'm saying, got along with you, man, you was gone. <laughs> you were gone with the quickness. They didn't play around with that. You know, they need to bring in players so they can win. People's jobs on the line, man. <laughs> you know. You know, they ain't playing about that at all. You know, they ain't playing about that at all, man. At all. <laughs> You know. So. 
Also, I think um True Emperor, shout out to him. I think he said he wanted me to talk about the Ravens. Um Baltimore Ravens. Right now, the Baltimore Ravens, I don't think I, I don't know if they're going to sign Lamar long term right now. I think they're gonna do they're gonna pick up his option. And then from there, they're just gonna see how he does this season. Um, to me, they need to find a better training staff because y'all had way too many injuries. So, um, let me see something. Okay. So I mean they might keep Greg Roman. The way it's sounding in these interviews, I don't think they're going to keep Greg Mo Roman. But, you know, he plans to have him back. Harbaugh plans to have him back, but um if they have Greg Roman come back, Greg Roman has got to get better with the play calling. He's got to incorporate the passing game. You got to have balance. If you don't have any balance in the NFL, if you can't throw the ball well just as good as you can run, you're going to be in trouble. You know, and that's that's just the facts. The Ravens, you guys, um, Emperor, y'all organization has always been defense first and run the ball. Like, y'all run the ball. Like, even when Joe Flacco was playing, Joe Flacco didn't attempt that many passes. He only attempted, like, 20 to 25 times a game. Y'all mainly was a running team. Y'all had Ray Rice. Y'all had other guys. Y'all were a running team. Y'all have always been a running organization. Y'all just like the Steelers. That's what happened to the Steelers. That's why they haven't been winning. Too busy trying to throw too much. See, Big Ben back in the day was a game manager. He started out like Tom Brady. And then they got Santonio San Holmes, started opening up the passing game more. So... You guys need a true number one. Y'all need another tight end to go along with Andrews and a slot receiver. Y'all need some receivers, man. You know, you guys need some creativity as well on offense. Y'all don't have any creativity, and that's why you guys a lot of times don't really take off. You know, that's why you guys don't take off a lot and everything because, um, you know, y'all don't take off because of the balance. If y'all have balance, if y'all have a balanced team, seriously, if y'all have a balanced team, man, y'all are going to be trouble. The Ravens will win a Super Bowl if Lamar, if they'll allow Lamar to throw the ball more and give him some weapons. Lamar will be a Lamar will be a baller, man. I'm telling you. I already see what you guys can be. Lamar can throw the ball. The problem is y'all just don't have a create a creative offensive coordinator. Greg Roman, people have complained about Greg Roman. They've complained about his play calling all the time. You know, Greg Roman has never been, you know, he's never been called like the, a great guy. Like, I remember he had, um, what's his face? He had, um, man, what's that man's face? Um, he had Colin Kaepernick. Right. He had Colin Kaepernick. Um, 
after that first season, man, Colin Kaepernick was done. Like, they figured him out. They figured him out. And then Greg Roman could never adjust. Like, his adjustments were terrible. You know, it would be like, man, what is this guy doing? And, like, seriously, we, we used to be like that all the time. We used to be like that all the time. Like, what the hell is Greg Roman doing? I think I think he coached with the Bills, too. And I think, man, he was terrible for the Bills. <laughs> I think the Bills were ready to get rid of him. So that's, that's you guys' problem. Now, the Josh McDaniel thing, um, oh, yeah, also for the Ravens, y'all have got to get more depth. Y'all gotta y'all gotta get a new training staff. That's it. A new training staff and new um physical um a, a, a physical strength and conditioning coach. Y'all need a strength and conditioning coach. ASAP. <laughs> he gotta get you guys stronger because you guys get hurt off of like mediocre stuff. Y'all walk into somebody, oh man, my ankle, my ankle, coach, my my knee. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So that that's all that is. You know, you guys just need help. Y'all need help. Y'all need a strength conditioning coach and y'all need a trainer. Y'all need better nutrition. Y'all need a nutritionist too. Gotta help you guys because you guys, y'all muscles shouldn't be that brittle or your muscle or y'all y'all shouldn't be tearing muscles like that or breaking stuff. Y'all lost everybody. Every week. <laughs> Excuse me. Every week you guys lost somebody. It was like it was like on the show. Come on down. Who do we lose today? Oh, we lost Marcus Peters in our corners. But yeah, everybody want to blame Lamar Jackson why y'all were losing, right? <laughs> I tell you, man, these people these people don't know Jack, bro. I keep telling y'all these people don't know Jack about nothing. You know. So that's how that goes, but that's all y'all have to do. So, let's see, um, Also, Lamar Odom says he wants LeBron James to inspire Laker teammates the way Kobe Bryant did. Um, the L.A. Lakers are struggling midway into the 2021-22 season. However, there are still people around the league who believe the purple and gold have enough pieces to win the championship this year. One of those people is former Lakers champion Lamar Odom. The 42-year-old said that one of the reasons the Lakers won two titles in 09 and in 2010 was Kobe Bryant's leadership skills. He also expressed hope that LeBron James can manifest some of the late legend's positive traits. Of the teams that I played for that won championships, we had a tremendous leader in being Bryant, Odom said. A lot of his will, tenacity, it kind of rubbed off on us. I would like to see LeBron James' will and tenacity and his will to win rub off on these Laker guys. Odom played a huge role in L.A.'s back-to-back -back championships. He played a significant number of his games in those years as a reserve. Still, he was able to contribute well, especially in the playoffs. 
The Ford also won the NBA Six Man of the Year Award in the 2010 and 11 season. It took more than a decade before the Lakers got to raise the Larry O'Brien Trophy again. L.A. won the 2020 championship, thanks in part to James Heroics and the NBA bubble in Orlando, Florida. Unfortunately, the Lakers were not able to replicate their success in the 2020-21 season. They finished the regular season as the number seven seed in the Western Conference and lost to the Phoenix Suns in the first round of the postseason. L.A. was likely hoping that the acquisition of Russell Westbrook this past offseason will provide the team with the boost. However, the Lakers have not yet found their rhythm this campaign. They are currently 24 and 26 in the standings and hold the number nine seed in the West. The Lakers will look to get back on the winning track when they take on the Hawks Sunday, which they did not win that game. I believe the Hawks won. I didn't get to see that game, but I saw the Charlotte game. And the Lakers, man, they're just, look. We got to get out of this, oh, we're going to promote who the league wants. Listen, we got to start promoting all the talent. The LeBron James is not Kobe. Kobe Bryant wasn't on the sideline checking stats. Kobe wasn't on the side. He wasn't in practice just there to have fun. No, it's not. A, it's, it, you want to have fun, but at the same time, you want to win. People don't understand that Kobe is from the old school. He's from the old school mindset of, look, man, I'm trying to win. You know, if you're looking for friends or to make buddies and all of that, then yeah, LeBron's your guy. Like you'll you'll win, you'll win like once in a while or something, or down the line. It'll be a long time, but hey, you'll have fun. But you're going to get all the blame. If you're the role player, you're going to get the blame. Kobe is going to take the blame from everybody because Kobe's like, look, man, we're here to win. You know, he knows what he knows what he can do. He knows what he what he couldn't do. But Lamar Odom and everybody has got to stop trying to make LeBron Kobe. Kobe is Kobe. LeBron is LeBron. LeBron is a tier one talent. But he's a tier two, tier three type of player mindset. He's a tier two, tier three player mindset wise. But as far as talent, yeah, he's tier one. As far as marketing, as far as bringing people to the games, yeah, he's 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 second to none. You know, LeBron James to play as long as he has, that's that's impressive. Longevity stats. That's basically what he's gonna go down for, longevity stats. But the things that he's doing is detrimental to his team. He's not bringing guys inward or closer. He's tearing guys apart. And then on defense, you want to play center, but you're not calling out what's going on and you're not holding guys accountable. But the first person who Kobe Bryant held accountable, excuse me, not accountable, accountable was him, himself. He held himself to a higher standard. He did. He held himself to the highest standard that you can hold yourself to. You know, he didn't care. You know, he didn't care about all the hoopla, whatever. Oh, I've scored this many points. Kobe wanted to win. Kobe wanted to win. LeBron James is worried about getting these stats so he could pass Kareem so he could talk his junk. Because he feels that makes him a great player. That doesn't make you great. Stats don't make you great. It's your impact. When we talk about impactful players, Joe Montana doesn't have the stats that Marino or Warren Moon had. But we don't care about his stats. We knew when it was the fourth quarter, we needed to win the game. We needed to make a comeback. We needed to get our kicker in position and win that game. Him and Tom Brady were second to none. That's facts. Those two, Charles Haley, when you needed a sack, you needed somebody to make a big stop, 
Charles Haley made that play. Lawrence Taylor made that play. Those are tier one players. Kobe, tier one. Michael, tier one. Will, tier one. Bill Russell, the greatest winner in history. Bill Russell, the guy y'all should be looking up to. Not no damn Michael Jordan, not just him. There's a lot of tier one players. Dr. J, Moses Malone, tier one players. But yet, we got some young tier one players coming up. John Morant, Evan Mobley in um, Cleveland. Even though Cade and their team ain't doing well, he's showing you promise. Uh, Brandon Ingram is showing you he might be the next guy. When Kevin Durant and all these guys are gone, Brandon Ingram might be the best player in the league. From a, from a standpoint of his, his length and how he plays the game. Seriously. The guy's amazing. But we're not talking about him. We're talking about these bum Lakers. You know, I respect Lamar Odom. I respect where he's coming from. But these are two different mindsets, two different ideologies, two different toughnesses. If that's a word, two toughnesses. I'll make my own word up. And what I mean by that is, Kobe Bryant played with multiple injuries, had to get his knee drained, his ankle drained, never complained, never complained about it. But yet, this guy here get hurt, y'all want to come up with an excuse. Y'all come up with so many excuses for this man, it's not even funny anymore. It's like, oh my goodness, dog. Like It, it comes a time when it's downright sad. It comes a time when it's downright sad. Seriously. It comes a point where it's downright sad. It's sad, man. You know, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, you guys could say, oh, you just hating. I'm, I'm not hating. I wanted to see LeBron win, but my thing is, it's the way he's winning. He's not winning with class. He's winning with, it's just me, selfishness. And that's not going to last long. You're teaching these young kids, it's okay to go for stats, F a win. As long as you did good. Listen, if you care about stats, go play golf, go play tennis, go do boxing individualism is what drives those sports in basketball football baseball hockey it's not about who's the best player now you could talk about who's the best player at their position then now we're talking but if you're talking about overall who's the best then you you can't compare how are you gonna say Isaiah Thomas was just as impactful as Wilt Chamberlain was on the court. He was. Oscar Robertson was just as effective as Michael Jordan was. He was. Magic Johnson had impact that was just as good, if not better, than Bill Russell. It was. <laughs> so let's get out of this mindset. Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit that notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you love what you hear, please, man, go to the um, description box. You can hit the Cash App link. It'll take you there. You also can Super Chat now, guys. So make sure you Super Chat when we go live. You know, so... Like I said, man, so, you know, lie, you know, donate a dollar, donate a million dollars, whatever you can give, we'll happily accept. I can't believe the Giants picked this coach. The Giants are going backwards and the Bears going backwards. <laughs> Man, dog, it's going to be in Josh McDaniels for the for the Raiders. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, we'll see, man. But I don't know, man. I, I don't know. You know, if, if he gets him a good defensive coordinator, if he can find somebody better than Derek Carr, I think he'll be good. But I think somebody forgot to tell the Raiders that Tom Brady don't come. <laughs> 
Tom Brady don't come with Josh McDaniels. I'm just saying, and and Mac Jones ain't coming with you. You got Derek Carr. Let's let's hope he can help Derek Carr. Because if he can get Derek Carr to play effectively, you know, they're going to be, it's going to be trouble, man. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough in that AFC West. So I held you too long. Um, Thank you for listening. I'm out, man. Um, Deezy.